Let's go back to, uh, again, manager due diligence and uh, get some perspective from uh, both uh, Rob and, and Jackie. You guys have been doing this for a very, very, very long time, and uh, Art was extremely clear how he does his process. Uh, I'd like to learn more from a Bank of America point of view and then Pamco Prisma as well, so we can you know, compare. <laughs> sure, I, I would echo everything that, that uh, Art said. I mean, ultimately, I've spent most of my career doing operational due diligence, so I definitely have some red flag stories that uh, I'm sure are more reserved for cocktails than for, for here. But um, you know, ultimately, it comes down to you know, are you communicating what you're supposed to be communicating, uh, meaning basically a, a, an under, undercurrent, excuse me, of, of honesty, right? There are a lot of managers that uh, say things to you in a meeting and then you read something in the documents and you're like, well, wait a second, that doesn't really match up. Uh, in terms of other things, you know, that we look for in managers, really, uh, these are sort of softer ideas, but, or softer concepts, but hubris is one, right? Um, there are a lot of managers out there who, you know, all of a sudden they're they're down and they want to take more risk and, you know, maybe they're changing their buying habits and maybe you see them in the paper and maybe, you know, there, there are things that are data points that you can pick up that are not, you know, provided in the DDQ or the marketing deck or the PPM that are that are useful. I wouldn't say it, it, it drives our process, but it's something that we're, we're always keeping an eye on. Um, in terms of other things that we look for in managers, ultimately it, it comes down to a long-term partnership, right? We've, we've had managers on our platform for over 20 years. Uh, we've been around for a long time. Uh, we're in it for the long game. We, we want partners who, who do the same. We're, we're not in it for a three-year trade or a five-year trade. And, uh, you know, it, it's pretty easy to, to sort of decipher who those folks are and who they are based off exactly what Art said. People who invest in not only their investment talent, but also in their, their risk talent and then their sort of non-investment related uh, talent in terms of their ops people, their compliance people. And you know, as we all know, technology, right? Uh, cybersecurity is a huge area of focus for our operational due diligence team. Uh, the last thing I'll mention just quickly is background checks, right? Um, really, you can find out a lot about people that you're surprised by by background checks. Um, you know, again, representing things that may not be the case uh, is a good way to to get dinged pretty quickly uh, in the diligence process, but also get fired off a platform. So. You know, I think for us, I, I, I would say we would echo pretty much what everyone else does, uh, but the real focus as of late have been on a repeatable process, like Art said, but really hubris, right? And I think particularly in the equity space where people are making very good returns, you want to make sure that, you know, uh, their egos aren't getting so big that, uh, that they could take unnecessary risk that we're not aware of. Yep. Indeed. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Rob. So from an investment management point of view, Jackie, um, if you can elaborate and also um, if you can tell us more about, once you do the diligence on managers, how do you construct portfolio? Sure. So it's a, in terms of uh, manager selection, it all really boils down to people and process. So understanding um, and identifying who are the experts. We say we like to hire people that have the expertise of uh, an inch wide and a mile deep. So we like to construct a portfolio of these uh, specialists, of, of these experts. Uh, we don't like tourists. We prefer, you know, people who are stick to what they're good at. Uh, we have a saying in the office, um, it, we want people to pay for their own tuition. If they want to learn something and dabble in a market they're not familiar with, then they do it on their own dime, not on our investor's dime. Um, so I'd say um, in terms of process, as echoed by my fellow panelists, it has to be something that's repeatable. Um, it has to be something that it's where hedge funds is all about alpha generation. It's not just about you know someone being right. In fact, I don't care if they're right or wrong. I just want them to make money. It's all about absolute returns and controlling downside deviation, and then also as well, you know, not being directly correlated with equities. Except when equities are going up, like Vidak said, then it's okay to be correlated with equities. So I'd say um, it's all about that, about finding uh, you know the, the culture, the the DNA of the firm, of who these people are, where they grew up in terms of. Uh, they, where they were they trading? Did they come from the banks, run trading desks? You know, where where do they learn their trading skills? Who do they surround themselves with, and things like that? And um, when it comes to market views, uh, I think that's usually something I put at the end of the conversation, because I'm never going to ding somebody or like somebody because they agree with my market views. Uh, so I think it's independent of that. Uh, you know, my favorite hedge fund managers are people that are uh, very nimble and very uh, with a flexible mindset. Uh, people who could turn on a dime, people who realize that assumptions uh, could go away. I like people who state their assumptions first, 
and uh, who say, uh, you know, this is where I'm, where I'm in, this is where I add, this is where I stop out, and this is what's on my radar. So I like to hear people that have a game plan as opposed to, you know, someone's very committed about, you know, rates have to reprice, uh, JGB yields have to go to 2%. Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong, but I just want, you know, we want to invest with the people that's going to extract the most amount of profit dollars uh, through the cycle. Because sometimes someone has a very long-term view, but they get taken out with a one-week stop, and that's not going to help anybody. Then they sit out they, uh, with their loss and they can't make it back. So I'd say that that's what really matters, to be uh, flexible and have that mindset, and quite frankly, to always be hungry and scared, you know? Thanks, Jackie. And uh, Ark, um, why have so many managers been falling? What's the percentage in your book that of the managers that you actually interview? You just you don't even consider deploying. Um, so our invested portfolio is the invested portfolio. We see hundreds, if not thousands, of managers a year. We might hire five of them, uh, but we, even though we have advisors in the name, we are a fiduciary, we run portfolios for our clients. So when I'm talking about my investable universe, it's a universe of managers where we actually have money deployed. It's not a list where, oh, you know, these managers are rated higher, these lower. Uh, I guess historically that's been the key distinction between, um, let's say, consultants and fund of funds or allocators. These days all the lines are blurred, so there are consultants that are doing direct investing, we are doing advisory work for certain clients. So um, that, that, you know, that distinction is maybe not as pronounced. Um, you asked a question earlier about portfolio construction. Uh, for us, it starts and ends with uh, what the client needs. Uh, most of our business, we don't really have commingled portfolios anymore. I think we might have one or two. Uh, pretty much everything else we do is very client-centric. Uh, it's collaborative with the client. Uh, and we design portfolios based on what their needs are. Those needs might be, uh, you know, in, simple, in very simple forms, make me the most money, which, you know, certainly puts you into uh, certain parts of the market where high risk equals high return. Uh, but for most of them, these are institutional clients. Uh, a lot of these institutional portfolios are in the stay rich uh, camp, not so much the get rich camp especially as it relates to their alternatives. So for them, the portfolio solution might be risk mitigation, it might be uh, liquidity management, it might be smoothing out their return profile in a specific scenario where they have nothing else in the rest of their portfolios that would, that would do well for them or be able to provide liquidity in, at a time when they need to be meeting funding commitments somewhere else, things like that. So uh, that's portfolio construction for us. Uh, first and second and last step is figuring out what the client needs and then we put the portfolios together out of our lineup of existing managers or sometimes we have to hire new ones, which we do uh, frequently as well, to make sure that we can fine tune and deliver them that return pro profile that the clients need. Thanks, Ark. 